morning and welcome to worship at First English Lutheran Church in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. Special welcome to all of you who are here in the sanctuary. We especially welcome the family of Easton Andrew Edwards. We're so glad you're here for his baptism today. And we can tell who you are. You're just all snuggled up here in the first couple rows. Welcome to all the rest of you, too. It's good to see you, some of you, for the first time since COVID. So it's every time I see you back in this context, my heart just rejoices that we can be together again in whatever way we can be together. So welcome. This morning, our plants are given by Bob and Dee Wills in um, honor of their 66th. 66th wedding anniversary, and I think that deserves a great applause. They're not able to be here today, but I'm sure they'll watch us later and receive your applause then. Um, just a couple little notes. I will be on vacation September 1st through the 7th. Dave will be Dave will be here then. <laughs> Dave will be leading the service and um, guiding you through uh, the liturgy and also sharing a sermon with you. And so I'm very grateful for Dave that he's willing to do this, and I'm sure he'll appreciate having you here and um, enjoying the time you spend together next week. I also want to mention again that a planning committee is being formed for God's Work Our Hands. And um, Bruce and Alita Gross, two of our new members, will be heading it up and maybe calling you about helping put plans together. We gave them a long list of names of people who might be interested in helping with this. If you don't get a phone call, you can always call us too. We don't know if you have time this year or not. So if we didn't Put your name on the list and you want to help plan this, please give Bruce or give the office a call and Bruce and Alita will get back to you. And now let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please stand as we just quiet down for a few minutes and take a deep breath. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we're so grateful for this time to be together in your presence. Thank you for your warm welcome to us each time we gather as your family together. Thank you especially this morning for Easton and the fact that he will be baptized into Jesus Christ this morning, that you are claiming him as your very own child. Thank you for Andy and Jess and their willingness to bring him to you. And we know that you will continue to guide them as, as they lead him daily to a relationship with you. We pray, too, for our hearts as we open them to you this morning. Enable us to hear what you're saying to us as a church, but also as individuals. And show us once more through the words of songs and scripture and sermon and our conversations with each other that you love us and you are always with us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives us our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In, in your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness. They are not written in your bulletin or on the screen. They are for your ears to receive them. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we... Oh, sorry. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. With you. And now please remain standing as we sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty. strength without you we are without you we are weak and wayward creatures protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves that we may be preserved through your son Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord Amen, Amen. you may be seated The first reading is from Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 and 2, and 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, 
so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statues, will say, Surely this great nation is a wine and discerning, wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as to the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statues and ordinances just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so that as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It's time for the children's sermon. And there are children here today. It's so good to see all of you. Can you see faith? She's, she's wondering how you're doing. Are you having a good day? Yeah, this is an exciting day. Easton over there, see him? Yep, hi Easton. He's going to be baptized today. Yeah, right there in the baptismal font. Oh, Faith just loves it when we have baptisms here, so she'll be watching. Hey, Faith, today we're going to talk about do-overs. Yeah, do-overs. She said I should tell you about my big do-over. Which one? There's lots of them. <gasps> the one about the buttons take a boat trip. That was when I was in first grade. So I was six years old. Almost seven. No, just six. Just six. And every single night, we would take a book home from school to read. Do you do that at school? And every single day, our teacher would ask us what book we read the night before. And every single day, I would say, this is the book I read. I did really read them. I love to read. Okay, so one day... I took home the book, The Buttons Take a Boat Trip. Are there any people who remember the button books? I guess nobody's as old as I am here. <laughs> well, I like to, like, the buttons go to the seashore. Th these were real people. Their name was Buttons. Buttons go to the seashore. The buttons take a boat trip. So anyway, I was going to my friend's house that night. And because I was going to my friend's house, I didn't have time to read the book. So the next day, when I went back to school, the teacher said, what book did you read? No, I didn't tell the truth. I said, oh, I read The Buttons Take a Boat Trip. And she wrote it down. And then I started feeling funny right here because I knew I had told her a lie. <gasps> yes, I told a lie. I know I'm a pastor, but I wasn't a pastor when I was six, okay? I told a lie, all right? But I felt guilty inside. And so I thought maybe the next day I should tell the teacher the truth. And so the next day when I went to tell Mrs. Emerson about the book I really had read, I said, Mrs. Emerson, yesterday I told you I read The Buttons Take a Boat Trip, but I didn't. Well, she looked at me very kindly, and she said, you didn't read the book? I said, no. And she said, well, would you like to read it tonight instead? I got a do-over. Yay! She forgave me and said, you get to do it again. Yeah, that was really nice of her. 
but it's also how God loves us. When we do wrong things, we just have to say, I'm sorry. Sort of like when you say those things to your parents. And Jesus forgives us. We all get do-overs. Do-overs. That's great. Should we thank Jesus for do-overs? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for do-overs. Thank you for do-overs. And second chances. And second chances. And forgiveness. And And forgiveness. forgiveness. In Jesus' name. In In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Faith. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Please stand. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold true human traditions. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Today our sermon is based on the scripture that Dave read for us from Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. I was completely confident I'd get an A when I handed in my first paper in my first college literature class. After all, I was a 50, 5 zero year old freshman who'd been writing for about 43 years. I couldn't wait until my paper came back with glowing comments. So I blinked hard and shook my head a couple times when I saw a huge X drawn through the front page and all kinds of comments on it like, this is not a critical essay. You have missed the purpose of the assignment. Do over. And then, make an appointment with me so we can discuss. I cooled down after a couple days and made the appointment. I was sitting on the floor outside her office when she opened the door. 
I noticed she tried to read my face as I stood up. I got inside, pulled the paper out, looked her in the eye and said, I've never written a critical essay before and I don't know how to do it. She grinned at me and we set to work. When we'd finished working, she said, I hope you understand why I did what I did. You're a Christian and you understand baptism, right? Well, what I did to you was sort of like baptism. I dunked you under and brought you back up to new life so you would be able to write better and differently. She didn't say, I could tell your pride needed a hit, and I was grateful for that. What felt like a punishment was really a gift. A do-over is a gift of grace. It's a second chance, a chance to get it right this time. Well, that's exactly what's happening in our Deuteronomy scripture today. The Israelites are standing on the threshold of a do-over. That's what biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann says. They are on the threshold of a do-over. The Israelites as a nation are getting a second chance to choose faith instead of fear. Forty years earlier, God had led them to the edge of Canaan. This was a land that was flowing with milk and honey, good food and security, and, and God had promised them this land. It would be theirs, and he would make it possible for them to possess the land and live there safely. No longer nomads, they would be able to build homes, plant crops, raise a family. There would be peace. Well, at that time, 40 years before, they'd only been in the wilderness 11 months. Maybe they weren't sick enough of it yet. Maybe they weren't sick enough of the hot sand and the manna and the quail and the endless wandering. Because at that time, when God had said, here we are, enter in and take possession of the land, at that time the people had said no. And they had chosen to be afraid instead. They saw only the negative and why it wouldn't work. Why they couldn't do it. So even though God had already delivered them from slavery in Egypt and opened the Red Sea for them to walk through and guided them day by day by day through Moses, and even though he had given them a righteous law that would ensure their safety and stability as a community... Even though all of that, they still chose fear instead of trusting the Lord. Well, they couldn't go into the promised land if they wouldn't trust the Lord. They would need to obey once they got in there, and they couldn't trust him enough to obey, obviously. So they just lived outside the promise and lived by fear instead of faith for 40 years more years they lived in the wilderness wandered in the wilderness and the first generation out of Egypt died in the wilderness however their children and their grandchildren are still alive at the time of our scripture and they are now standing right where their parents and grandparents had stood 40 years earlier they're on the threshold of a do-over they're ready to trust God together. They're on the boundary between the old and the new, between fear and faith. And Moses speaks to them throughout the entire book of Deuteronomy, and he talks to them about this do-over that's coming up and about what happens next. He knows his own death is near, so every single word he speaks really counts. Hey, Israel, he says, this is what has to happen. Take the statutes and the commandments that God has given you, take them very seriously because they're gifts to you. They're straight from God's heart of love for you. God knows you. He created you. He knows what you need to thrive. If you obey his commandments with willing hearts, 
You will live fruitful and good lives. You will thrive. In our Zoom study this week, we talked about the scripture and God's commandments. We focused on the two words, so that. God's commandments are never so that we can be miserable. They're always so that we might live. So that we can flourish. So that we'll be free to live with joy and trust. So that we don't hurt one another or destroy the community God's given us. So that we can have abundant life. Moses emphasizes the integrity and righteousness of the commandments. They are just what God intends so that they will live. So don't add anything to them to make them more pleasing. And don't leave out the stuff you don't like. We do that a lot. Just obey the commandments God has given you as they are because these are for you so that your lives will be good. Moses continues, Now, folks, if you follow them diligently, not just when life is falling apart because you didn't follow them, if you follow them di diligently in the first place, all the nations around you are going to see that you're wise and you're discerning and that you have a God who's so near to you and loves you so much, he's given you a written law to guide you. Now, this was happening like the 16th to the 13th century B.C., and there, there was only one other nation that had a written code. That was Babylon, Hammurabi's code of law. So this was unusual to have a written code of law, and yet the God of Israel showed his love to his people enough to give them one, to care about their behavior, to care about their relationships. Moses knew that the nation would fall apart if they forgot God's commandments. He said, take care. Remember. Remember how God has provided for you. Remember he's given you leaders and manna every day and quail for meat and water and deliverance and protection and are you people ready, he says, to choose faith over fear? Are you ready to follow the Lord and obey him? Are you ready to teach the faith to your children and your grandchildren so that they too will be alert for God and understand God's love and promises so that they too will be able to name their own experiences with God and trust God and pass on their understanding and discernment to their own children and grandchildren. As long as the faith is passed on, the nation will flourish. Joshua was the leader who followed Moses. He's the one who got them into the promised land. And we read in 2431 in the book of Joshua, right toward the end, what happened? Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. In other words, the people kept following God as long as those who knew God and had experienced God were passing on the faith. The do-over required three things then. Obedience, remembering, and passing on the faith. Just that simple and that just that challenging. It's wonderful that this scripture lands on the day when we're baptizing Easton. His family has waited through COVID for this, and now the day is here. Baptism is such a vivid example of passing down the faith. Andy and Jess bring Easton to Jesus and promise they will pass on the faith to him in many ways. 
Alexandra and Matthew make promises as sponsors, and the congregation also promises to support this family and pray for Easton and give the parents what they need to raise Easton in the faith. In a few minutes, the Holy Spirit will claim him as a child of God as he is baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection. This is the beginning of Easton's relationship with the Lord. So right away, parents and sponsors, give him faith experiences to remember. Show him pictures of his baptism. He's older, so he'll get it. He'll remember what happened. And tell him he became a child of God that day. And then every year on August 29th, celebrate it with his baptismal candle. Read him Bible storybooks at his level of understanding and teach him meal prayers and bedtime prayers and bring him to Sunday school and bless him each night. I love to do this with my grandchildren. Draw a cross on his forehead and say, Jesus loves you and so do I. You are a child of God. Often, parents feel unsure about their own biblical knowledge. Perhaps their parents weren't absolutely sure how to pass down the faith either. Well, the nice thing is we all get do-overs. We can learn right along with the kids. I would suggest to all parents who have young children to purchase a beautifully illustrated Bible storybook. Read a little every night with the kids. The pictures are wonderful. still remember the storybook my mom brought home one night and all the hours I would spend looking at the pictures and hearing those stories read. It just grounded me as a child. We as a congregation are also responsible, and we have become increasingly serious about walking alongside young parents, helping them pass down the faith. We as a congregation are also in the middle of a do-over right now. The model we've used for years as Sunday school has lost its sustainability, its its effectiveness. The needs of families have changed. So after much prayer and conversation with families, the Christian Ed team has decided that Sunday school this year will be a hybrid model, so to speak. Families will worship together for the first 20 minutes of singing. And then the children will go to their own classes during the sermon for about 30 minutes, and the parents will get a chance to actually listen. You know how that goes when you have little children and you get all done with the service and you think, they made so much noise and wiggled so much and I didn't hear a thing. Well, we're trying to answer that need by giving the kids their own class in the middle of church, but they'll return so they can share in communion with you and the closing of the service. And when we get back to worshiping around the rail or sharing communion around the rail, they can come with you too and kneel by the rail and receive a blessing during that time. This will enable parents to learn and children at the same time. And the sermon I preach and the Sunday school lesson they have will coordinate So you will understand those papers they bring home and can do the little fun things together and know what they're actually about. Plans are also in the works for multi-generational times of food, fellowship, and fun during which we can enjoy relationships across generations and share knowledge with each other. The kids can teach us oldsters how to make full and good use of our phones and we can share with them those skills that are going to disappear if someone doesn't pass them on. God calls all of us. He called Israel, and that's far away from us in many ways. But he's calling us right now to the new things that are springing up in front of us. Large X's are being drawn across some of our favorite methods. Huge do-overs await us. And they are filled with God's promises of future goodness and life and the chance to pass on the faith. We are the ones standing on the threshold of a do-over. Will we choose faith over fear? 
will we choose faith over fear as we stand on this threshold together and prepare to follow right into the land God has prepared for us. Amen. Please stand, my friends, and let us sing Baptized and Set Free. follow along in the red hymnal in your pew it is on page 227 right in front of of the hymnal in baptism our gracious heavenly father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of jesus christ we are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the holy spirit we are reborn children of god and made members of the church the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the, communion, in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Parents called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Easton baptized into Christ? I do. <laughs> That's okay. Got a lot going on up here. As you bring Easton to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Easton may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Easton grow in the Christian life and faith? I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Easton in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Easton and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and the forces that defy God? I renounce, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? 
I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, Easton. Easton Andrew Edwards, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Easton, I'm going to put my hands on your head now to pray for you. Okay, could you hold this for me? Just for... Sustain Easton with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're almost done, honey. Now I'm going to draw the cross on your forehead and say, okay, it's going to feel kind of slippery. Easton Andrew Edwards, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, it dropped. Well, you should get down and get that. Thank you, but that's yours. Now we're taking the light from the Christ candle and we're going to give it to the sponsors. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us all welcome the newly baptized. We'll just we have welcome you, all... you. Okay, go for it. We, we welcome, welcome you into, into the body of Christ and into, and into the, the mission we share. Join, Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just slid into that. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him be loved. They are being what he is now. Yes, Jesus loves me. 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 The Bible. 
It, it is easier when they're six weeks old. <laughs> but he will probably remember this if you show him enough pictures. <laughs> you can blow that up. God be with you. You may sit down. Oh, I took the wrong part. I'm sorry. <laughs> You may remain seated for the prayers of intercession today. There sure are a lot of moving parts, aren't there? <laughs> Including my mic. Let's pray. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, leaders, and all lay people who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority, especially President Biden and all branches of our government. Give them great wisdom and discernment during this time of crisis. Enable them to work together for the good of all people. Raise up wise and discerning leaders at all levels of government. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are in need. We think especially of the people in Afghanistan, the people in Haiti, the refugees who are coming to our country. We pray you will support and encourage them through us and support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Ignite us to do what you've called us to do, to care for others. Lord, in your mercy, God, hear our Lord, prayer. Lord. We pray also for those with health needs. Megan Shields, Paula Markworth, Phyllis Cutie, Darlene Dane, Ellie Zerflu, Micah Masconas, Jenny Braun, Sally Goss, and those we name in our hearts. We pray, too, for those with chronic conditions that often bring discouragement and those dealing with mental health issues and despair. We know that you care for each person with great tenderness and love. Lord, in your mercy, you are hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of the Lord with one another. For those of you at home, the peace of the Lord be with you. Trombone player. <laughs> Our offertory music today is a chorale by Johann Sebastian Bach.
Please stand. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And also also with with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them them to to the the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right to to give give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. God of new life, pour Pour out out your your Holy Holy Spirit Spirit on us us and on on these these gifts gifts of bread and wine. wine. Raise Raise us us up as as the body of Christ Christ for the world. world. Breathe Breathe new new life life into us. us. Send us us out out alive with justice, peace, hope, and and love. love. Let's pray together in the words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come. Thy thy will be done on earth as as it is is in heaven. Give Give us us this day our our daily bread. And and forgive us our sins. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And, and lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, power, and and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today when you arrived, you received a small chalice with grape juice on one side and um, a small piece of bread on the other side. We start with the bread and then we move to the grape juice. They're easy to open. You are welcome to share in communion with us, even if you're not Lutheran. We only ask that you believe in Jesus Christ and that he is your Savior. We call this an open table in this church, that this is the Lord's table And all of God's children are welcome to share together. So come and eat where you are. You can, um, I'll be giving it to my husband, Horace. As I say to him, the body of Christ given for you, please feel free to say that to the person next to you. 
and then I'll say it again to all of you, and then we'll also do that for the wine. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ shed for you. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your son. By your spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's close today Let's close today with go my children with my blessing.
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Have a good week. See you next week. Thank you.